staff for their diligent service to the gospel truth. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participants and participant observers. It's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family members with those things that he knows that you are standing in need of as well. And I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer. It's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. We'd like to continue to express our appreciation to the leadership and the entire congregation for allowing the gospel truth to come and to present the gospel truth worship hour here at 3354 San Pablo Avenue in the city of Oakland. It's hosted by the Church of Christ. And we'd like to continue to convey and to extend to you all a very cordial invitation that you might come and be a part of the Gospel Truth Worship Hour. And then we also want to invite you to come to be a part of our morning worship that begins at 9.30 with our Bible study. Then at 11 o'clock we move into the morning worship hour. Then at 5 o'clock we're here with the Gospel Truth Worship Hour. On Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock we have an adult Bible class. And then at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, we have a Bible class for all ages. You are certainly encouraged to come out and study with us what thus saith the Lord. And we promise to give you a Bible answer for your Bible questions. And this, the Gospel Truth also wants to remind you that there may be someone that you know that may have a social need that you may not be able to address. If you give them the information to one one then they will have the opportunity to make a call to this referral service. They will be able to state what their, main, what their needs are, and then they will be directed to the source that will be able to feel the need that they are in need of. And we also want you to know that, of course, uh, our economy is moving up and people are going back to work, and uh, uh, we want you to know that uh, the East Bay Works One Stop Career Center is still available to provide you with uh, resume writing activities, uh, resume critiquing, uh, their telephones and fax machines and all those things, computers that will assist you in becoming gainfully employed. So if you go to eastbayworks.org, there you will be able to find the East Bay Works One Stop Career Center that is nearest to you and then you will be able to go out and find some assistance in your job search. Okay, so that's all that I have uh, this evening by the way of announcement. I do want to remind you that we do have a prayer list and we encourage you to write to us and send us the names of your friends, your relatives, and your loved ones. I will pray for them, encourage you to pray for them, and everyone in the viewing audience to pray for them as well. Alright, so we will be doing our prayer list this evening and as we do, the uh, congregation will be singing in the background for our sweet hour of prayer. So as they begin, we will start our prayer list. So we're going to start with Sister Alberta Jean Anderson and the Jacksons, Alan IV, uh, Allison Titus, Brittany, and Alvante. And to remember that Allison is also now Allison Ishman. Dr. Janice Washburn, Mr. and Mrs. Luckett, Sister Yule Wright, Sister Tarika Hudson and family, Sister Elaine Pinnell, uh, Sister Laurice Williams, and we're also praying on behalf of 
uh, Sister Gertrude Tolliver and Sister Mary Marshall, uh, Sister Mildred Perkins. We're praying also on behalf of Brother Alan Frazier, Sister Bertha Reed, Sister Christine Aubrey, and also Sister Maria Wilson. We're praying also on behalf of Sister Ethel Jackson and Sister Nettie Hamilton. We're praying on behalf of Sister Roberta Haywood, Brother Lewis Williams and Brother James Williams, Brother Wilbur Jordan and also Pastor Black, Sister Helen Yancey and Sister Esther Gabriel. We're praying also on behalf of Mr. Eric uh, Herbert Lester and Mr. Eric Mitchell, uh, Brother Johnny Carson and family, Sister Dorothy Lofton, and we're praying also on behalf of Sister Margaret Belton, Sister E.B. Parker, and the Marx family. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Ida B. Rockwell, Brother Eugene Williams, and we're praying on behalf of Sister Tony Germany and Sister Ethel Gary, Trina M. Josie and family, Brother Ron Thrower and family, Brother Keith L. Carson and family, uh, Brother Frank Davis, Brother Robert Bryant, Mrs. Jones, Brianna Shands, Al and Wendy Cummings, Norma Coker, Sister Davy, uh, that's Brother Dave, and Sister Sadie Abraham, Sister Marion Harrison, and also we're praying on behalf of Sister Gwen Murray, and the Bellamy family. We're praying also on behalf of uh, Michael Andrews, and Dolly Andrews, and Kip Andrews. We're also praying on behalf of uh, Sister Marilyn Pauley and family, and Sister Shantae Wilson, Ronald and Francis, Sister Hannah Mae Parker, and also Mrs. Anna L. Moore. We're also praying on behalf of Brother Gaylord Kelly and family, and Crystal Yule, Mayla Dykus, and Sister Maddie Williams. We're praying on behalf of Malachi Yule, and we're also praying on behalf of Amber and Amani. Antoinette and Alex, Sister Betty Lou Wright, Sister Mary Jo A. H. Carson, and we're also praying on behalf of Sister Emily Austin White and Mrs. Yvonne Johnson, Sister Patricia Benjamin. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Lucille Cox, Dr. Stephanie Pinnell Phillips, and uh, Sister Nicole Mosley. We're praying also on behalf of Thelma Harris and Mary Johnson, Brother Trey Stewart, Joe Jackson Sr. and Joe Jackson Jr., Mr. Anthony Pettaway, and Sister Idell Hearns. We're also praying on behalf of uh, Brother Woodrow Will Russell and Sister Pearl Evans, Grace Ewell, Zimmy Champion, Sister Teresa Bozeman. We're also praying on behalf of Brother Isadora Davis, Sister Linda Green and family. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Edwina, Sister Matilda Dunn, Sister Annie Riley and family. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Shirley Burnell and Juan Fernando and Enrique Vallejo, Sister Teresa Wanzo, Brother Michael Jones, and Sister O'Dear, Brother Eddie Langford and family, Charles and Yolanda Stewart, and we're also praying on behalf of Sister Moselle Lester. Sister Yvonne Hutchings French and Sister Ruby Clifton. We're also praying on behalf of Brother Hawkins, Brother Adams, Sister Regina Gilmore, and also Brother Freddie Mims and Sister Mims. We're praying on behalf of Sister Skurlock, Brother Edward Kelly, Sister Mildred Strickland, and we're also praying on behalf of uh, the Riley Flowers family, Sister Annie Bell McGowan. We're praying also on behalf of Cynthia Blackshire. John and Monique Deering, Damone and Donnell Timms. We're praying on behalf of Sister Ruthie Blackshear, family and friends, Nikki Sinclair, and also Ryan, Natasha, Roy, and Carmen. We're also praying on behalf of uh, Wayne Weibel and family, Sister Betty Wise, Sister Patricia Roach, Sister Pearl Clay, Mrs. Madeline Dunham, also, Mrs. Connie Devac. And we're also praying this evening on behalf of the bereaved LaVon Williams and family. And also on behalf of the Belinda Compton family with the loss of her uncle Jimmy Anderson and also Vanita Pierce. We're also praying on behalf of the John Martin family during this time of their son's illness. Those are the names that we have on the Gospel Truth Prayer List, and we're encouraging you to write to us to P.O. Box 3944, Berkeley, California. And we will certainly add their names to the prayer list, and we will pray for them and encourage all in the viewing audience to pray for them as well.
I'd like to thank the congregation for singing in the background for us this evening as we begin the Gospel Truth Prayers. Let me start off by saying, you know, our cities and our communities have been plagued by senseless violence. And I am encouraging this evening all of you who are viewing the program that you will pray that we might have peace in our cities and in our communities. Peace throughout the United States. We have seen an upsurge of violence and senseless killing. So all we can do is ask God that he will bless us and to keep us safe. And then we're asking that all the murderers will be brought to justice. And we know that God does have something for all murderers. So in case you don't know that murderer, you need to know that God has something for you. Tonight, I would like to take you to the book of Luke the 10th chapter. And in the 10th chapter, we're going to see an illustration where a lawyer had come to Jesus and he stood up and he asked a question. And his question was designed to tempt the Lord. But I believe it was honest and sincere. He asked, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, I trust that at some point in time, that those of us who have not yet named the name of Jesus as their Savior, that they will also ask this question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Right. The answer is very plain and simple. You have to become obedient to God's holy and divine word. And in so doing that, you will be eligible to receive eternal salvation. All right? Now, what we find here is that the lawyer basically was seeking to tempt Jesus. And so as he asked him the question, what must he do? Well, then Jesus didn't give him a direct answer, but he put it back on him. And he asked him, he said, what do you read in the scriptures? And how do you read that? Right. The Bible says, Jesus asked him, what is written in the law? And how do you read it? And so the lawyer said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus said, you know what? You answered well. That's right. He said, if you do this, you shall live. In other words, he received the answer to his question. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the lawyer. Now, some of you may know something about lawyers and not put the lawyers down. <coughs> But this particular lawyer was seeking then to further justify himself. Jesus, he had answered the questions and, and, and he basically made the statement that he had to love the neighbor, his neighbor as himself. So he then asked Jesus, he said, well now, who is my neighbor? Now, of course, he had a, a narrow view of who his neighbor was, thinking that it was probably the person that lived next door to him or just across the street. But he wanted to get an answer from Jesus about who his neighbor was. And so with that, Jesus began to cite this parable. He said that there was a certain man who went down from Jericho to Jerusalem. And on his way, he fell amongst thieves. Mm -hmm. Now those thieves, uh -huh, as thieves would do, they stripped him of his raiment, they beat him and wounded him, and then they left him half dead. And so, as Jesus goes on with this particular parable, he says, and by chance, a priest came by. Now, we all know that a priest is expected to be a holy person, a holy man in this case. Well, the Bible says that as the priest came along, he looked and saw the man, and he decided to make a pass on the other side. He didn't stop to help the man whatsoever. And then, by chance, there came a Levite. Right. Now, the Levite was a minister of the synagogue. He was, no doubt, an assistant to the priest. But he, when he came by, he did a little better. He looked on the guy and saw him, but he also passed on the other side. All right? Now, the Bible says there came a Samaritan. Now, I want you to understand, the Bible is very clear here. It says a Samaritan. And the point is being made because 
at that point in time, due to the racial stratification, the Jews and the Samaritans had no dealings. But here was a man, a Samaritan, who came by, and as he saw this wounded man, he came to his aid. The Bible says he had compassion on him. Right. All right? So he came to the man's aid. He got off of his beast and put oil and wine and, and nursed him up and brought him on into an inn. All right? And then the Bible says that as the man prepared to leave, to go on his, continue on his journey, that he said to the innkeeper here, it's two pence. Now, if you incur any more expenses, when I come back, Man. I'll pay you. Right. All right? So we see here now three individuals that had come by. The question was asked, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The answer was given that if you do this, thou shalt live. Yeah. And then, of course, seeking to justify himself, the lawyer went on about the neighbor. So then Jesus asked him, as a result of the scenario that he had presented, he said, then who? All right, let's go ahead and see exactly how Jesus answered this question to him. He said, Which now of these three thinketh thou was neighbor unto him that fell amongst the thieves? All right, so now remember, the lawyer asked Jesus in an effort to tempt him. Jesus didn't give him a direct answer, but he put it back on him. And then after the lawyer continued further, Jesus gave this illustration, this parable that we just started, talked about. Uh, in the scriptures, pe people generally call this the good Samaritan. But I'm looking at it as the question of the lawyer, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So then after Jesus presented this scenario, he asked the lawyer, he says, so now, which of these three, huh? uh, all of three of these people came by. Now, which of the three do you think was his neighbor? Well, now, the lawyer, being an intelligent man, he couldn't help but to see and to answer the question rightly. And the answer then of the question was, uh, then he that had showed mercy on him. And then Jesus said unto him, now you go and do likewise. And you want to have eternal life? You already know the scriptures. You already answered well. You said, and, and uh, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all right? And with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. So we, we don't want to get caught up in thinking that, that our neighbors are simply limited to the people who live next door to us or across the street. But anybody that we come in contact with that yeah. we might be able to assist, yeah. especially with showing them the way to Jesus. Right. Now, we have a responsibility as Christians. Jesus said, let your light so shine right. that men might see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. So we are lights. Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now we know that physically, Jesus is not here, but we are his ambassadors right. on earth. So our lights must shine to those who are in darkness, that those who are in darkness can see the light and come to Jesus before it is everlasting and eternally too late. Somebody might ask us, what must I do to inherit eternal life? We can go to them and explain to them just like Jesus. He says that you have to, you know, obey the Lord. He said that you have to uh, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your strength. All right? And then we need to recognize that you have to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Now, no doubt you find yourself in a situation being healthy and strong. And so you wouldn't want anything to happen to you. So if you came by, and, and we have this opportunity regularly, and lady came by this morning, will you help me with some change, okay? Well, I only have a little bit, but I gave her a little change. But we began to realize that you have to use some wise judgment because right. 
sometimes the same people are always on the same corner. So you have to use some wise words, especially this is what, just the early part of the month. So they got to check, you know. But at the same time, we have to use wise words. We can do what we can, encourage them to come and be a part of our service so that they can be the recipients of the blessings. And then they don't have to be going around bumming, okay? But we, we do have a responsibility to do. The Bible says to do good to all men. But especially, especially those of the household of faith. When we talk about the household of faith, we're talking about the Lord's church. The one that he died for, that he bled on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says we have to feed the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. This is the church. This is the one in which individuals can come in and receive access to eternal life. Now, you have to understand that just because you come into the Lord's house and sit in the pews, that that's not enough. Amen. We all have to have some work of faith. Remember, James said, I will show you my faith by my works. Yeah. So now, you need to examine yourselves to see what your work is. Now, you can be supportive of a ministry. And if you're supportive of that ministry, then, of course, that is your work of faith. God knows what we're doing. Uh, he knows that we're just sitting down on our stool or do nothing. Uh, he also knows that we are being active and busy in his kingdom. That we might be able to assist and to show those who are in darkness the way. And so we also need to keep in mind that as we are blessed on a daily basis, we need to be thankful to God. Amen. Now sometimes we only find ourselves in the position of saying, thank you Lord, when, when we have asked for something uh -huh, that we didn't have, of course you're also supposed to say thank you for that too. But all the opportunities, in other words, you've been praying for good health. Now you back up, you say thank you Lord. All right, but then also you just have to keep in mind that all the opportunities, you woke up this morning, thank you Lord. The Lord bless you to come out into his house to worship him in spirit and truth. That's another reason to say thank you because everybody didn't wake up this morning. Amen. Let me ask you in the viewing audience, did you give God his just dues this morning? Amen. If you didn't, you owe God something. And remember, God is keeping record. Yeah. The Bible says that when we come up before him in judgment, that a book is going to be open, and another book is going to be open, and out of these books, we will be judged according to the things that we have done in this body, whether they be good or bad. I'm so glad that it's only God who's keeping record, because I know sometimes some of my brothers might have some problems with me, and they might want to mark me down or say some bad things about me. But you know what? It doesn't matter how good you are. Folk are going to still have something to say about you. Right. And it may be negative. It doesn't matter how bad you are. You could be Satan's number one crony. They're going to talk about you too. All right? So you just need to keep in mind, don't worry about what folks say. Just give God uh -huh, his just to Give him the thanks that he needs, and he will continue to bless you. Remember, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness then all of these other things will be added to you. Amen. Now, what are those things? Well, what do you need? The Lord knows what you need before you even ask him. Right? But he does want you to be humble enough to ask him for what you need. All right? Just like our children come to us and say, Dad, I, 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 I need some new shoes. Well, you know, they're going to tell you they need some Jordans, right? right. But, but as, as, a, as a parent... You know what you need to do, go down there and get them some payless kids, right? Because that will fit in your budget. Now, I don't know, you, you have that kind of money where you can pay $100 for a pair of shoes. Well, you know, you have to use wise judgment. All right? But we have to be thankful, and, and we need to always express our thanks. Uh, sometimes we think that somebody owes us something, all right? Well, God woke us up this morning. So you owe God something by saying to him, thank you, Lord, for another day. And not just another day, but a new day. Right. You know what? One thing about God, he always provides us with new things, fresh, every day. Right. And if God wakes you up in the morning, you have a new day, a brand new day. I guess it may I call it Monday, but it's a new Monday. It's not a Monday that you have already experienced. You just need to keep that in mind. And we 
we must change our attitude uh, to be pleasing to God. And if we want to walk around and be in a huff and, and just think that I'm, I'm doing this all on my own, well, you have some problems. The Bible says, without me, you can do nothing. So we need to recognize it. And then as long as we give God his just dues, he will continue to bless us with those things that we have need of. He will bless us for the material, with the material things. He will bless us with our life and with our health. And he will bless us with our food and our shelter. And as I look out in the midst, I don't see anybody who has missed any meals. And, and if you did, you chose to do that uh -huh, because you were dieting. Uh -huh. But you just need to keep in mind that, that the Lord has blessed us immensely. All right? And he's blessed us with our families and our loved ones. So we should be thankful. God has blessed us with our jobs. And I know people, and I've heard them stand up and, and ask the Lord to bless them and to help them to get a job. And I know that God has answered prayer because he's a prayer-answering God. Right. And I know tonight that somebody is going to start on a new job tomorrow. Right. All right? So we just need to keep in mind how good God is. And when we realize just how good God is and how he has loved us and bestowed and showered all of his blessings on us, we're going to have a renewed spirit. Yes. We're going to have a spirit of joy and compassion and a willingness to serve the Lord because he is so wonderful. Right. Tonight, I want to give you God's plan of salvation. If you are like the lawyer and you want to know what you can do to inherit eternal life, the Bible says that you need to hear God's word. The Bible says when there has been much disputing, Peter rose up and said, men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the words of the gospel and believe. So you have to hear the gospel and you must believe it. Then Jesus said, you have to repent of your sins. Luke 13, 3 and 5, he said, I tell you many, but except you repent, you shall also likewise perish. So if you don't want to perish, then you need to come to the Lord, repent of your sins, and then you must make that grand confession. You must confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's the confession. And then last but not least, you need to be buried in the liquid grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. By doing those five things, the Lord will add it to his body, which is his church. And if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. He's knocking at the door of your heart. He's saying, open up and let me come in. If you open up and let me come in, I'll come in and sup with you and you with me. It's my prayer, if it's God's will, that God will bless you to be in our midst next week when the gospel truth will once again come your way, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word. Until then, it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.